So where does this cancel culture take us? What is the logical conclusion? What is the end of the cancel culture? I will tell you what it is. It is right here in this city, Washington, the District of Columbia. That's where it will end if we don't put an end to the madness now. Just up the mall is the Washington Monument. Are we going to tear the Washington Monument down? Are we going to re rename it the obelisk of wokeness? Okay. The obelisk of wokeness. <laughs> Obviously, that was uh, Senator Tom Cotton uh, giving the Washington Monument a pretty cool nickname. A lot of people like it. The obelisk of wokeness. Sounds a little bit metal, actually. Uh, now, naturally, of course, this is in the context of the woke mobs are coming for you. And they're going to force you to realize black lives matter. And that all human beings deserve dignity. Oh, no. Anything but that. No. You know, I love how the narrative from the right wing is, oh, hey, uh, I can't believe these, you know, how weak these lefty soy boys are. Oh, man, how pathetic. You guys are all snowflakes. Ugh. Now the same people are shitting in their pants. Oh, my God, the woke mobs are coming for you. They're too strong. Too strong. Well, what is it? What is it? I mean, it's 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 Schrodinger's leftist is what, it's, it, what it is. Either they're both, you know, at the same time too strong uh, and, you know, they're, they're going to overpower everyone. Or they're uh, weak little soy boys. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Look, let me tell you. Uh, I think the conservatives are some of the most fearful people on the planet. I, look, their entire ideology is anti-change, anti-progress, right? And I think it's because these people are afraid of change. They are. They, they, can't, they can't handle it. Uh, I think that they're afraid that they're going to lose rights if a minority group gains them which is not what happens. It's not a zero-sum game here. Uh, or that they're going to lose money if we use some of that money to help the poor. They're going to lose power. They're going to lose their status. If we open up leadership in the workplace to women and minorities, they're going to lose their uh, ability to rise to the top because, let's just say it, a lot of the CEOs are pretty mediocre. And they really, the reason that they're, you know, that they do well is because they know how to game the system. They know how to pay off a politician in order to get special breaks for their company. Not only that, but they're afraid that more competition will erode their ability to basically corner the market. That's what that is. It's all about fear. It's all about being afraid of losing their power and privilege. And, and, and really, this applies to a certain class of people. But the, the trick is that they have gotten... A larger group of people who don't benefit from those, you know, same things or don't benefit nearly as much as the people at the top do uh, to be afraid of losing their privilege, what little they have. And so that's what this whole, oh, the woke mobs are coming for you. In reality, woke mobs, they're not coming to your little podunk ass town. They're, they're, no, they're not. They're not going to come and, and what overturn, burn down the Dairy Queen. I mean, no. What this is is that this is a fight for equality, for for parity, right? Not to put one over the other. It's to put all of us on the same playing field. But again, in order to keep their power and privilege, those who have reaped most from it. They're going to sell fear. And that's what that is. And so that's why Tom Cotton is like, quick, send in the troops. We have to crush this popular uh, uprising, right? That That is black, white, and, and everyone getting together to say that this is wrong. What is happening in this country right now is wrong. And we need to fight against that. But no... Tom Cotton says we got to crush these guys before everybody else gets the same idea. He's literally a defender of the establishment. The status quo. That's who Tom Cotton is. That's who he defends. 
So, you know, let's get that straight. And that's what a lot of these conservatives really defend is that status quo. So if, if you're one of those people that you know, supported Trump because, oh, he's, he's anti-establishment, he's going to take down the establishment. No, no, they're all defenders of the establishment. That is literally what conservatism is, entails, defending the status quo. That's what that is. That's it. Those are my serious points. Let's have a little fun uh, and read some fun responses to the obelisk of wokeness. <laughs> That's pretty rad, actually. Great band name. Uh, <laughs> in fact, a couple of people have said, my daughters will never know, uh, not know it as the obelisk of wokeness. Another one says, I watch this so you don't have to. All you need to know is the obelisk of wokeness, formerly Washington Monument and the Temple of Wisdom, formerly Washington National Cathedral, sound like the raddest Zelda dungeons, and I'm all for it. By the way, <laughs> uh, later in that, he does say that they want to, the left, right, wants to rename the Washington uh, uh, National Cathedral into the Temple of Wisdom. You know, well, now, wait a minute. That, that's also kind of cool. Right? Not as cool as the Obelisk of Wokeness, obviously, but Temple of Wisdom. Here's the irony, right? That's a national cathedral. I guess religious? It, that's generally what a cathedral is. Uh, and so, I mean, renaming it the Temple of Wisdom that actually kind of helps religion. Interesting point, little contradiction there, because again, the popular narrative on the right is the left hates God. What? No, we want to attack and dethrone God. Sounds like a JRPG plot. Just saying, just saying. All right, more uh, fact. The obelisk of wokeness is the world's tallest and wokest obelisk. Originally called the Washington Monument, it was renamed to celebrate the defeat of Donald Trump and his racist minions in 2020. <laughs> that's funny all right uh more those of you who had obelisk of wokeness on your bingo cards today's your lucky day indeed indeed um another one here uh we will offer up sacrifices to the obelisk of wokeness i believe those sacrifices are confederate monuments <laughs> Uh, and let's see, here's another one. Uh, if you're trying to make a point, you need to come up with a fake name that wouldn't be super cool. I would pay to see the obelisk of wokeness for sure. Wouldn't we all, man? The obelisk of wokeness is a rad name, and I dare you to actually rename it that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, and finally, I love it when fascists become such a parody of a parody that they accidentally veer into something totally metal like obelisk of wokeness. We see a lot of that. It, the whole Republican Party at this point is a parody of a parody. And it would be fun and funny if also they weren't so incredibly nihilist and dangerous. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.